Okay. Good. So, um, I'm um, yeah. I'm here to to talk to you. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what what was uh, what was said in German because I'm 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 not really good with uh, with with this language. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess um, it is. You you have learned that I am here to speak to you ab about uh, something that is called whistleblowing, and in particular, a project that uh, I have been uh, working on for uh, the past couple of years, which is uh, called uh, Global Leaks. Um, so uh, to start, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Arturo Filastò. Uh, on the internet, uh, I go by the, the name of Hellace. Uh, and uh, I'm an open source uh, free software developer at uh, GlobalLeaks and uh, the Tor project. Um, a year ago, uh, we, we founded this uh, nonprofit uh, organization in, uh, in Italy called uh, uh, the Hermes Center for Transparency and uh, Digital Human Rights. Uh, and uh, it's, um, it's this uh, organization that brings together sort of uh, um, both people from uh, the, um, let's say, um, security and, and hacker um, side of, uh, of um, um, you know, and, but also uh, people that have uh, um, a background in, uh, in, in policy and law. So we're sort of trying to tackle with the topics that have to do uh, with transparency and digital human rights from uh, at, like two different technical perspectives, that of the law and that of uh, uh, technology and, uh, and computers. Um, and, uh, and one of the, 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 the things that, that we develop there is, is the software that is called GlobalLeaks that, uh, that I will now uh, talk to you a little bit about. Um, but for starters, I think what is, uh, what is important to, to say is, is what, what, what we are talking about, like uh, what, what, what we mean when we, when we say whistleblowing. Um, so to, to say what whistleblowing is, we must say what is a whistleblower. So a whistleblower is somebody uh, that is aware of some sort of uh, malpractice or illicit activity uh, and decides to inform in the public interest people about this malpractice. Uh, and this may be either uh, through... Um, informing some news organization, some media, about this malpractice that will then make it public, um, or some organization that will uh, make sure to transform this, uh, this information, this, uh, this whistleblow, into some sort of action. Um, and um, and a, a very interesting thing about whistleblowing, and it is something that we have seen, especially in recent years, is that um, it's it's something that can also be be done by uh, like small grassroots uh, organizations to bring about a very important change, uh, also on a very local level. Um, and one of the things to uh, to note is that uh, it is uh, it, it is proven that whistleblowing is. Uh, the only effective tool in fighting corruption. And this has come up from um, some, um, some reports that have been uh, written by organizations such as Transparency International, and it, and it comes out that the only truly effective tool that uh, uh, contrasts uh, uh, corruption, especially large-scale corruption, is whistleblowing. Uh, and for this reason, there are also lots of um, laws in place uh, that require uh, companies and organizations to have a whistleblowing system in place. An example of this is uh, the Sarbanes Oxley Act in the United States that requires uh, publicly quoted uh, U.S.-based company, publicly quoted U.S. companies to um, to have in place an internal reporting system where employees can report malpractice to the internal audit. Uh, that will then supposedly uh, follow up on that report and, and, uh, and start an investigation. Um, and so, as, as I was saying, uh, a very interesting thing is that even small activist organization can, can have a very big impact. Um, so let's, let's, I guess this, this is a, um, a, a not at all extensive timeline of, of whistleblowing, but it sort of um, outlines some very famous cases uh, of, of whistleblowing that have, uh, have uh, come to, to the public attention. And these are mainly cases of whistleblowing uh, where the, um, the, the, the target that was chosen as, as receiver to, uh, to, to, to the, the, blue, the, the whistleblows uh, were, um, were media organizations. Um, but it, it was not uh, necessarily um, their original intention. 
um, for starting from the left, we have uh, um, uh, Daniel Ellsberg uh, that that is uh, you know well known for having uh, 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 leaked uh, the Pentagon Papers. Uh, an interesting thing is that he originally did not blow the whistle uh, to a news organization, but he had uh, uh, gone to the government saying, uh, "Look, uh, these uh, these documents prove the that you know um, the the." The U.S. involvement in in Vietnam is, uh, um, you know, is 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 probably something that is quite debatable, and I think that the public has the right uh, to know about these things. and And they dismissed the case and did not um, uh, investigate on it. And it was only at that point that he decided to go and blow the whistle uh, to uh, a news organization that initially protected his identity and decided to not disclose him. But then they ended up in a, in a legal lawsuit, and so. Um, he decided to to come up and say, "Yes, I did this, uh, and I did this because I think it is right that uh, uh, people um, know about these facts, uh, and I assume all my responsibilities for it, and uh, you know sue me and so they did um, and I guess the the how, how it ended up uh, the, the, the charges ended up getting dropped actually initially for a technicality uh, it was because uh, uh, some um, um, some some um, some means through which some evidence was acquired was not uh, uh, um, following proper procedure, and therefore the uh, the the case ended up getting dismissed. Um, but the interesting thing is also that um, 30 years after uh, he blew the whistle, um, the U.S. government ended up actually publishing these documents and making and releasing them in uh, in, in public knowledge and uh, and and. Uh, and you know, acknowledging the fact that, that this was actually uh, a, a right act, and he is now considered, um, you know, a hero. Uh, whereas in you know, at the time in which he, he blew the whistle, that that was not the case. And yeah, I guess the we hope that this will be the same thing for uh, also the whistleblowers of of recent time. Another very interesting case of of whistleblowing is Frank Serpico, uh, which was this. Um, this police officer uh, in the New York uh, Department uh, uh, of, the, of, of Police uh, that uh, was was witnessing uh, lots of corruption and and uh, and you know all all of these cops were were taking uh, uh, bribes and uh, and money in exchange for favors and he said no this is wrong we must stop this and and so he initially went. Uh, to people inside of uh, of, um, of of the the police department and and started you know raising these issues and these concerns uh, and for this reason he started becoming victim of uh, a lot of harassment and uh, um, and you know he he basically was forced to abandon his job um, and eventually these uh, these people um, got um, got prosecuted and it and uh, and um, and they got uh, um, uh, they, they got indicted for for having uh, for having uh, uh, received bribes in exchange for favors. Uh, but his his life as uh, as his career as as uh, as a as a police officer was uh, was sort of destroyed, and he had to uh, abandon the country and uh, uh, go and live in Switzerland. And um, yeah, his uh, it, his his um, the outcome for his personal life was not uh, so so happy. Um, another very interesting uh, um, case of whistleblowing is uh, is what we we call um, uh, deep fraud, uh, which was uh, the, um, the the leak of uh, of, um, of, uh, of 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 papers uh, that that led to to the Watergate scandal and uh, uh, the indictment of Nixon. Uh, and and the interesting thing here is that um, initially the identity. Of, uh, of of the whistleblower in the deep throat case that ended up uh, eventually being uh, uh, Mark Felt was initially uh, not known to the public. Uh, his his identity was uh, was 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 shielded by uh, these um, you know by by the newspaper that um, that 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 covered the story, um, and it, and it was only much later, thirty years later, that uh, his identity was was unveiled, uh, and so. Um, you know, I mean, this is this is an interesting case of uh, of whistleblowing that has huge impact, where the the identity of the whistleblower is uh, is is kept secret. Uh, another more recent case is the Enron scandal um, that uh, 
um, revealed uh, um, the fact that the U.S. government uh, uh, during uh, the September 11 attacks was aware of, uh, of, of, of such possibility and they decided willingly to, to not act. Um, and, uh, and this was uh, uh, the work of, um, of, um, of uh, the, the three women uh, that, that you see there. Um, that, um, that, that ended up being uh, nominated uh, um, Woman of the Year for, uh, People of the Year for, uh, in the New York Times, uh, Cynthia Cooper. Um, um, and, um, and more recently, we have seen uh, some, some very um, important cases of, of whistleblowing that, um, that have been mainly driven by, uh, by digital means. And this is mainly what, what, what I will, will then go on to, to talk about. Uh, and, um, and a very important case is, is, uh, is clearly Cablegate. Um, these uh, uh, thousands of cables uh, from the U.S. Uh, government that uh, were, were leaked by, uh, by Private Bradley Manning. And, um, and, and then uh, very recently the, the PRISM scandal. Um, and, and I think what, what is clear from all of these cases, what, what emerges is that um, these, the, these, these uh, acts of wrongdoing, um, these, um, these facts that were previously hidden from the public, uh, could, could never have been, um, would have never come out if it weren't for the uh, courageous and brave acts of whistleblowers. And, and I think it is clear that we need more whistleblowers. And, and we need whistleblowers to stay whistleblowers because that way they can keep blowing the whistle on things that are wrong and, 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 uh, and you know, in, incentivize uh, more whistleblowers to, to become whistleblowers. Um, so the, the question, I guess, is um, given the fact that today we live in this overly surveilled um, world where... Uh, we have PRISM and, uh, and, and we have uh, all of our communications that are being monitored. And whistleblowing is becoming more and more something that people perform through digital means. Uh, and even if they do not perform it through digital means, the traces that are left um, that could potentially end up identifying us as the whistleblower are, 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 are drastically increasing. And, and so would, would it have been possible for a person like Mal Mark Felt, Deep Throat, to stay anonymous for 30 years um, today? Um, and, and I guess with, with this uh, hoping that the answer to this question is, is, is yes is why we, we started uh, developing uh, software like GlobalLeaks. Um, and when, when we initially um, started thinking about this, this, this idea, uh, we, we, um, we looked at, at what already existed there, like what, what people were already doing with respect to whistleblowing. And we, we realized that it was actually a very, a very big, big ecosystem. Like there were a lot of organizations that had been active since um, you know, many, many years uh, fighting for, for whistleblowing and raising awareness on, on, uh, on, on the topics of whistleblowing, doing policy work uh, to uh, push for laws that would uh, protect better whistleblowers. Um, an example, a very good example is, is Public Concern at Work, which is this organization in, uh, in the United Kingdom that, it, that exists uh, since uh, uh, 20 years. And, and they even offer a hotline service that a whistleblower can call and say, hey, I'm about to blow the whistle on this thing. Uh, you know, my, my boss, uh, um, the, the, there is this person ins inside of my office uh, that I know that he's, he's taking some money uh, to, you know, do some favors and make sure that certain papers get processed sooner. Uh, and, you know, but I fear that, that if I go to my boss, he may be complicit in this thing and therefore I will lose my job. What is the best thing that I can do? And at that point, they, they give advice and counseling to the whistleblower, and they tell them, you know, um, you, you, can, you, can, you can either go to your boss, uh, but, but perhaps uh, in this case, since this is something that is, uh, you know, of public interest, perhaps it's best that you go to the media. However, if you go to the media, you need to be aware that at that point, the important ties that your boss has could lead to, uh, you know, you never getting a job again. 
And so they sort of offer counseling and advice to whistleblowers that are put in this, you know, very delicate situation where they, they, are, they are witnessing some, some, some wrongdoing and they don't know what they, they should do. And, um, and so these are sort of the, the, the whistleblowing ecosystem that, that existed before. Um, and w what we have seen happening since, uh, since 2010 is, is, uh, is like an explosion of, of all of these, um, you know, new generation leak sites that, 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 you know, inspired from WikiLeaks said, yes, we also want to do something similar to, to, to what WikiLeaks has done. Uh, however, we realize that, that WikiLeaks is, is something that can only target um, such, you know, a mass scale global interest to things we, we want to act on a more local level we want to act on on more specific topics uh, that are closer to us and that we know that leaks about these things uh, are things that that could not be dealt with by by WikiLeaks because uh, you know they they do not have um, necessarily the the local knowledge to be able to understand what the impact of is of these leaks uh, and 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 probably you know um, something that gets leaked to um, to Balkan leaks is something that is not necessarily going to end up on the front pages of every newspaper of the world. But for their local context, their local um, area, that is something that has a very important and big impact. Um, and so, looking at this, we um, we 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 realized that there was, there was a need for, for some software to support these kinds of, uh, of initiatives. Um, and what, what we realized is that a lot of these uh, uh, organizations and, and, and initiatives um, really did not, um, did not invest much time in, in securing their submission system. And a lot of them like, did not even have uh, um, you know, basic security uh, measures in place, like HTTPS on their submission system. Uh, and, and they just had you know, like, like a web form where you could input some text, and, and that was, you know, their 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 submission system. But but they clearly had, uh, you know, a lot of energy and a lot of interest in in doing something. But they were lacking uh, the the technical skills to be able to have the right tools to to do this. Uh, and so for this reason, we decided to uh, to start working on um, on on a, on a on a general purpose tool called uh, GlobalLeaks um, that had um, as as its goals. Uh, that of being extensible uh, and um, applicable to as many different use cases as possible. Um, so uh, we 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 said let's let's try and figure out if we can make a piece of software that can be used both by grassroots uh, leak sites that want to um, collect uh, leaks uh, about you know some specific local area, but that. Uh, perhaps even a corporation or a business that uh, needs to comply to Sarbanes Oxley uh, can use, so that the same piece of software, uh, free software, can be shared by both of these um, kinds of, of 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 applications. And uh, some of this water. And so. The, the, clearly, the user interface should be something that um, should be tailored and customizable by the adopter uh, as, as much as possible. And we also wanted it to be as easy as possible to set up. Um, in, in, in the, um, like our, our, our end vision is, is to reach a point where GlobalLeaks can be a software that you can download even on a desktop computer, uh, click on some you know, executable, and run on your desktop computer a GlobalLeaks submission system. Uh, this was, was sort of the vision that we have in mind. And we're not there yet, but we have a Debian package that you can install with apt-get install. Um, so, you know, even, even so somebody that, that has learned uh, to, um, you know, even somebody that, that, that is just, you know, a, an average sysadmin can, can still set up a system like this. Uh, it's, it's not... As as easy as as we would want, but uh, but but still, it's uh, it's 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 fairly easy, and and we're we're working on getting there, um, and and obviously what what we realize while doing this is that um, there's always a balance between uh, usability and security. Uh, at 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 certain points, we we found ourselves making some decisions uh, and and needing and trying to figure out like where to draw the line, because. 
um, greater levels of security lead, in, in some cases, to impairing the usability. And so at, at, at some point, at, you, know, you, you, need to, you need to make a, make a choice and, and, and choose where, you know, how, how, how to, to, to balance it. Uh, and, and clearly, anonymity is, uh, is, is something very important, and it, and it should be supported by, by default by, by the application. And so to, to give you an idea of what uh, like our, our, our project uh, timeline looks like, this is, uh, this is sort of from, uh, from 2011, when, when the idea of, of GlobalX was born, uh, to today. Uh, this is sort of the process that we have, uh, we have gone through. So I, I guess the, the most uh, um, like interesting things are uh, the first, uh, the 0 0.1 release of GlobalX that we, we, we did in, uh, uh, towards the end of, of 2011. And this is something that we called uh, an advanced prototype um, because it was, um, you know, it, it, it was still uh, very alpha and very, um, um, you know, not very stable software. And uh, and we also made some um, some you know design mistakes in 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 doing that that we that led us to then completely rewrite it. Uh, but still, the 0 0.1 release was went in production for um, for a, a few actually different uh, uh, news organizations. Uh, one is Yuznivetsky, uh, which is this uh, local uh, investigative uh, um, uh, news organization in uh, in Serbia. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, since, since 2012, we have been uh, developing the, the new piece of software uh, that is now deployed in, um, like in two, two different circumstances, one for uh, this uh, news organization in, uh, in Hungary uh, and another one for an investigative uh, journalism uh, uh, project in, uh, in Italy. And we're also working on, uh, on a deployment for uh, uh, a, a very big... Um, group of, uh, of news organizations in, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, so what, what, what um, I, I, guess, I guess it is, it is kind of clear from this, but we still keep getting these, um, these, these questions. So I, I guess it is, it is important to, to make a disclaimer. So uh, GlobalX is not a leak site. We, we do not want to um, receive any leaks whatsoever. Uh, and uh, we are just here to uh, develop a software and, and, uh, and provide support to uh, other whistleblowing initiatives that are interested in uh, collecting uh, anonymous leaks. Uh, so, you know, we do not want leaks. Please do not send us leaks. We're not interested. Um, and so this is, is how, um, this is how Global Leaks uh, looks like. Um, and... Um, and yeah, I guess later, if, if there's a bit more time, I can I can also uh, show you a bit uh, a little demo of of how um, of how it actually works. Um, and um, yeah, this is uh, I'm not sure if this is, uh, yeah. So this is this sort of explains more or less how how the the, the system works, uh, and from. I'll, uh, without getting into into much technical details, um, the concept so GlobalX uses um, a system which is called uh, Tor Hidden Services. What what Tor Hidden Services give you uh, is uh, location anonymity for where the server is found, which means that uh, somebody looking at the network does not know where the GlobalX node, like the server that that collects the leaks, is physically located. Um, so the whistleblower would then connect through the Tor network, which makes them anonymous, to such Tor hidden service, and they will perform a submission. Once they perform such a submission, uh, the GlobalX node that is configured by a node administrator, which is the person that runs the software, um, it, the, the goal of the, the, the role of the node administrator is that of selecting what are called rece receivers. And the receivers don't necessarily need to be the node administrator. Uh, the person running the, the global leak site can be a different person than the people that are receiving the leaks. Um, this, this allows you to create, uh, as I will show later in some practical examples, uh, some interesting um, 
uh, scenarios where you are very, very much distributing the responsibility. So you have one actor that is running the Global League site. Their goal is just to promote the, the node, the initiative, campaign for it, tell people to leak to it, but then they are not the people that are receiving the leaks. It's some other people that they have deemed competent at analyzing the data, that they you know, consider trustworthy people that will do a good job at, at you know, verifying that the information is factual, um, that uh, you know, the documents are properly cleaned and, uh, and redacted from sensitive information before they are published. Um, and and they, they select them as receivers on such global leaks node. Then a whistleblower, when they approach the site, are asked to, to whom they wish to blow the whistle to. And, and depending on, on um, what is the category that they classify their leak as, which can be you know, either corruption or, uh, I don't know, um, malpractice in uh, public administration or, um, I don't know, environmental-related leaks or, um, you know, and depending on which category they choose, there will be a different set of receivers. So the people that are most knowledgeable about environmental issues will be the people that are on the receiving end for a leak that has to do with such topics, whereas somebody that you know, is, is very expert in, uh, in, in public uh, bans and uh, in, uh, um, in these kinds of things will, will be on the receiving side for acts of corruption that have to do with public administration. And, uh, and so at that point, once the submission is done, all the receivers... Uh, that have been selected by the whistleblower get notified that a new submission exists on the node. They are then able to access the, no the, um, the, the submission, download the files that have been leaked by the whistleblower, and interact with them through a comment board. Uh, because when the whistleblower performs a submission, they also get back a receipt that allows them to then authenticate to the platform and say, I am the whistleblower, here's my receipt, uh, let me see who has accessed my files. And, and so they, they, are, they are shown, you know, a, a list of, uh, of the people that have received them, how many times they have looked at them. And they can ask, they can ask questions, and, 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 and this is also uh, very useful to, um, to make them not give up, you know, to, to make them know that somebody is actually caring about their leaks, that somebody has viewed them, uh, and, and also have uh, a sort of, mm, let's say, Secure. I mean, if if they if they trust the receivers to not uh, reveal their identity, but they have a confidential way of communicating with the receivers, um, so that you know they can exchange some thoughts and some comments on the leaks. Uh, and if if perhaps the receivers have more questions, they need more data. They can ask the whistleblower for more data, and the whistleblower can can upload more data. So this is sort of the the you know the gist of of how the system works. There are some, 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 more, um, mm, some more details there, but if, if you are interested, I, I, can, I can later uh, go on uh, in, into more detail in, um, in, in the question and answers. Um, and so, yeah, I guess this is, this is sort of the implementation status that we are, um, we are at now. Um, so we, we also have uh, multi-language support. Uh, it is possible to... Uh, to um, create these categories under which the the, um, the leaks uh, um, um, are, un that the whistleblower can choose from to submit uh, a leak to, uh, and depending on the context that uh, that they choose, uh, a different set of fields will be presented because the kind of questions that you want to ask when somebody is blowing the whistle on uh, you know a topic that has to do with uh, I don't know environmental issues may be different than the ones that you want to ask somebody that is blowing the whistle on um, you know some irregularities in a public uh, band um, and um, and and the reason why this is this is also very important is that uh, you want to uh, do some sort of pre-screening at the beginning uh, if if you if you only uh, what, what we have seen is that if you if you only um, allow somebody to input like enter here the details of your leak in a free form uh, text field uh, and then upload some files, uh, you will get tons of garbage like tons of spam and and, and you will have no uh, you know good way of of uh, of seeding through it if not by reading all of these corpuses. Uh, instead, if if you if you give a more structured um, um, uh, form to input uh, details and metadata about the leak, um, you will you will then 
uh, have a much easier task of seeding through those which are interesting and those which are spam. Um, and so for this reason, it is very important to, to pay very good attention to uh, configuring the, the, the proper fields in the, in the right way so that uh, your job of then spooling all the leaks after will be much easier. Um, but yeah, so what, what, I, what I wanted to, to, to talk a bit about was, um, was some, some actual like, use cases. So as, as I was saying, one of the possible use cases of an application like this is investigative journalism. So media outlets, magazines, and, uh, and you know, journalism associations uh, clearly have interest in, in collecting tips from anonymous sources to then uh, follow through and do investigative journalism work. Uh, and, uh, and and this is this is actually um, you know what what um, what what is uh, what what has happened in um, in um, you know in the, in the post WikiLeaks um, post WikiLeaks era. Like a lot of big media organizations have started to to say, ah yes, I also want to have a leak site, uh, and so. Um, you know, like the, the Wall Street Journal started their safe house, uh, Al Jazeera started their transparency unit, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and a lot of them have been also quite, uh, quite badly criticized for their, 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 uh, their security practices or, or lack of. Um, so, um, for example, the, the strong box, the, um, uh, the safe house, the Wall Street Journal safe house, was uh, shut down just 24 hours after its launch because it got uh, very heavily attacked uh, for uh, its lack of proper security on its submission system. And so organizations like this could replace their system with uh, something like GlobalLeaks. Um, and, and, um, and, and here it is very important since the leaks, um, I, I mean, depending on, on the, um, the area that the... Um, that the newspaper covers and, and the kind of leaks that they are incentivizing to collect, it's, it's a pretty hardcore leak site. I mean, they're probably going to get some, you know, things that, uh, that, that people, um, that some very powerful people would be interested in understanding who, who leaked them. Uh, and for this reason, it is advised to uh, collect um, tips only anonymously in in in, uh, in such case, uh, and and we have some some actual real world deployments of uh, with global leaks of of such such kind of uh, of leak sites like IRP, Yusnivesti, uh, and Atalazzo. Um, another interesting use case is public agencies, um, as uh, as as uh, as we were as um, well the the so yeah so. Um, in, there, there are there are out there a lot of um, a lot of uh, public agencies that uh, that run their own their own uh, uh, whistleblowing site. Uh, an example, like in the U.S. in the U.S., there is the IRS whistleblowing system, where uh, the the IRS, the you know the people that collect taxes in the U.S., has uh, has a submission system where you can go there and uh, and report on people that you su su suspect uh, that are evading taxes. Uh, and I believe they have set um, um, sort of a lower bound as to um, like what what kind of um, like what what is the size of tax evasion that you can report on? Like you can't report on you know the the dude down the road that that doesn't do the receipts at his you know corner store. I mean, you you can only report on on tax evasions of uh, um, a size greater than you know like one million euros, uh, one million US. Um, and, and they actually even even offer a, a bounty program where you can you can take depending on on, uh, on the amount of, of uh, taxes that they are able to uh, to get back from from these people you uh, you then take take a take a slice of it so you get like twenty percent of whatever they they are able to to get back in taxes um, and and yeah, I mean, this this system is something that could, for example, be replaced by a system that allows anonymous reporting uh, through global leaks. Um, and um, yeah, other examples are um, in in the, in the European Union. We have uh, the antitrust that uh, um, that that also uh, has interest in collecting uh, tips and reports on uh, um, on you know 
clear value, uh, violations of of of, um, of antitrust law and uh, and then to to follow up on uh, on doing some investigations and uh, and and so these these are cases in which um, the the goal of the um, of like the the output of uh, of the information that the whistleblower inputs into the system is not uh, necessarily an article or something that ends up uh, in in the eyes of everybody, it is uh, some investigation is started, uh, some you know procedure is started, uh, and um, and you know some some something is done about it, but it's not done in a public way. Like it's it's not something that um, ends up ends up uh, influencing that much the public opinion. It is something that uh, serves mo mostly as uh, as um, you know information useful uh, to uh, public a agencies, public entities to uh, do their job at best. And, and so, you know, it's, it's, it, it can be very effective whistleblowing at being able to spot tax evasion, market manipulation, uh, uh, and, um, and corruption. And, and a project that we're working on in, um, in Italy is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is specifically aimed at um, promoting the use of whistleblowing systems in Italy uh, through public agencies. Uh, so there is this body that uh, deals with uh, fighting corruption inside of Italy, uh, and uh, we are working on, make, on mm, basically creating uh, a nationwide um, whistleblowing system to report on irregularities and corruption uh, in the various different public agencies um, in the various municipalities inside of Italy and, and, uh, and have all of them have their own whistleblowing system from which they can receive uh, anonymous tips of, uh, of, of malpractice that is relevant to their agency so that they can then uh, you know, start an, uh, an internal investigation and, and understand uh, um, you know, if, if there is indeed some wrongdoing. Uh, as I was saying before, another uh, application is uh, is to corporate whistleblowing uh, because um, businesses are required by law to have uh, an internal reporting system. Um, replacing it with something that actually guarantees anonymity has has um, has huge uh, huge benefits. Um, and, and a very good example of this is something that happened in Italy uh, during the um, the Telecom Italia Sismi scandal. I'm, I'm not sure if, if you're familiar with it, but uh, basically in um, uh, around uh, 2000, uh, 2006 to 2007, there was this big scandal that um, involved uh, the Italian Secret Service uh, and the biggest uh, uh, telecom provider in Italy, Telecom Italia. Uh, and basically it turned out that um, the, the Secret Service uh, was... Uh, Leveraging uh, their uh, contacts inside of this uh, ISP, this uh, this uh, telco of Italy, um, to be able to obtain unlawfully information uh, that was useful to some of their, uh, you know, intelligence gathering operations, and a bunch of people knew about this thing. Like there was a whole, you know, branch of of of, of telecom that knew about this thing. And there was a whistleblowing system in place because they were required by the Sarbanes Oxley Act to be able to report on it. However, some comments that some employees made um, after the scandal broke was that they clearly did not want to report to that system because the head of that system was the head of security, which was the person that maintained relationships with uh, the Italian Secret Service, Tavaroli. So, uh, you know, you don't report to a system where you know that it's run by the person that you're blowing the whistle on because, you know, not only he will not do anything about uh, what you have blown the whistle on, but he will also know who you are and probably fire you and ruin your life. So it is very important also in, in, in companies to have in place a system that, uh, that uh, protects the, the identity of, of whistleblowers. Um, and and um, other other uh, applications are clearly the activist application, as 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 we have seen uh, in uh, all of the leak sites that have emerged uh, uh, post uh, post WikiLeaks, um, and. Um, And, and, um, and as I was saying before, a, um, an interesting application of, of, such, um, 
of such an initiative is that is where the the node administrator, the person that sets up the initiative, that campaigns for it, that advocates for it, that you know goes uh, inside of. Uh, offices or places where they know that there are possible whistleblowers to tell them, yo, if you know something, you can blow the whistle here, um, does not necessarily have to be uh, the same that receives the leaks. They can, they can also just um, use their, um, their position of trust and, and, uh, and, uh, and um, reputation as you know, a good activist organization to promote it and, uh, uh, you know, Make sure that people trust the platform and and uh, and and will uh, submit to it. But uh, but then the people that actually receive it and do the analysis can also be some other people that they have chosen and they have uh, um, you know mm, they, that they consider trustworthy and uh, and uh, and good at uh, at doing something about this information. But they don't have to be necessarily the same people analyzing the leaks. Perhaps because they're very good at campaigning, at, at uh, uh, promoting an initiative and advocating for it, but they don't necessarily uh, have the skills and competence to be able to then actually analyze this data. Uh, because a lot of the data that they will receive perhaps is very technical. It, it regards uh, some things that you need to be an expert on the matter to be able to, to, to properly um, analyze. Um, and so... I guess what what is what is useful is to actually show some um, some practical examples of of how uh, how such systems would uh, would work. So so the first because a, a very like something very important to 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 understand is that um, like technology is is definitely a part of it, uh, but it is it is it is the simple part. The hard part is coming up with uh, a winning organizational structure that will. Uh, allow you to maximize the impact that comes from the leaks that you receive. Um, this means, you know, how are you going to promote the initiative? How, how, are, how are whistleblowers that know something, that, that have the information that you wish to have, learn about the system, and, and submit to it? Then once you have the information, how do you verify that the information is correct? that it's not somebody that is trying to uh, feed the platform with false information uh, and trying to discredit it. Um, how do you, you know, seed through spam? Because you will receive a lot of things that are just complete junk. Um, and then how do you make sure that some, things come, that some impact comes from this information? Which can either be, you know, how do you make sure that the public opinion is influenced by it? Uh, how do you make sure that... Um, you know, the people that have committed such wrongdoing actually end up being prosecuted. Uh, how how do, you, do you make sure that, you know, the, this, that, that what the whistleblower has done is actually worth it? Because, you know, the, the, the danger is also that people submit to it and then just nothing happens. And, and you do not want that. Um, so here are some, some ideas. I mean, we, uh, as, as I was saying, we, we, we do not want to run any, uh, any leak site ourselves. We just want to help other people do it. Um, but obviously, you know, doing this thing, we have come up with a bunch of ideas and possible things that we, we, would, you know, we would like to see happen. Uh, and some of them are actually happening. Like the, 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 um, the deployment that I was saying in, um, in the Netherlands is, is an example of, of, of one of these uh, things that we had originally thought of, and then we, we actually found somebody that, that, that was interested in setting up uh, an initiative just like that. Um, but yeah, to start with the basics. So the, 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 the basic, the most simple um, leaks organizational structure that you can imagine uh, is one where you have the receiver that is the same as the node administrator. That is the person that sets up the initiative, that campaigns for it, uh, that you know, uh, promotes it to whistleblowers and sets up the software, you know, buys the servers and runs it, is the same as the person that receives the information and then publishes it and, and makes sure that you know, people are aware of it and, uh, and, and, and generates some sort of output. So this is sort of you know the the, the most basic possible um, mm, structure that you can imagine, but this does not necessarily have to be the only one. As I was saying, you can imagine a system where you have the node administrator, that is the person responsible for setting up 
the initiative uh, and uh, and maintaining the platform uh, and and in in, um, in in this case in the multi multi news leaks case um, the news agencies are actually the ones that are promoting it through their um, through their you know channels which is you know their their newspapers and such they they tell whistleblowers yo if if you know something you can you can report it to this platform and and then the whistleblower has the ability to choose from the platform to which news agency they shall blow the whistle to. So uh, depending on which, which uh, news organization they consider um, you know, most appropriate or most knowledgeable about the topics that uh, they, they plan on blowing the whistle on, um, they, they can choose you know, which one they shall blow the whistle to. And, and I guess this is, this is somewhat similar in structure, if, if, if you have heard about it, as, as to what OpenLeaks was supposed to be doing. Um, and, and yeah, so, so basically here you have a, a distribution of, of the responsibility between you know, the person that runs the platform and the ones that are the receivers. And the ones that are the receivers you know, have, have, have no idea where the server is, have no idea uh, you know, how to access it or how to administer it. They're just receiving these leaks. And then, you know, based on what, whatever judgment they make, they will then publish it independently through their, uh, you know, their existing uh, uh, channels. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is um, yeah. Another possible um, interesting uh, use case is, um, is, is a distributed system to uh, allow uh, tax evasion spotting. Uh, so uh, in, in, in a system like this, you have uh, um, some sort of uh, nationwide authority that sets up a platform uh, where, um, where on the receiver end are all the various different municipalities uh, that, that the whistleblower will then report evasors in. So uh, the whistleblower will say, I, I, I wish to report uh, uh, tax evasion in the region of, uh, um, I don't know, Bavaria. At that point, um, the, uh, the local authority for Bavaria will be the one that receives confidential, conf conf confidentially the notification uh, that, you know, that there is some suspect tax evasion uh, in, in, the, in the municipality of Bavaria. They will at that point start some you know, internal investigation to verify that you know, it is indeed uh, true that this person is, is, uh, is indeed evading taxes. Uh, and once the claims uh, are, are verified, they will you know, start an investigation and, uh, and, and you know, could claim, uh, hopefully, the, the, the taxes that were evaded. Um, and, um, and, I mean, it, it clearly, it is, it is very important to, to, to set, um, uh, you know, a limit as to what, what you accept submissions on. So you, you do not want uh, uh, to, to have the system be something where, you know, people um, report petty tax evasion. It, it needs to be clear that your goal is to uh, hunt down large um, tax evasions, like something... I mean, above 1 million euros, um, I mean, this is an arbitrary number. It, it, can, it can perhaps be, be, be set to something else. But th the goal of that is to, to avoid people um, using it as a system to say, you know, I, I dislike that person and I know that he evades taxes. I'm going to report him to the system and, and have him get into trouble. That is something that you want to avoid. So it's, it's important to, to, set, to set a cap on that. Um, but, but, but doing something like this is, is, can be a very effective means at, at, uh, at crowdsourcing uh, uh, large tax evasors, which are a very big problem uh, also in countries uh, such as Germany. Uh, I, I, I was looking at the statistics for, for Germany, and, uh, and like it's, it's, it's amongst uh, the, the, ten, uh, the, the, the countries with the, ten, with, with the biggest problems of tax evasion, like only two places under Italy. And uh, yeah, I found that quite surprising. Um, I mean, I would imagine like Germans being more following the the rule of law and such. I don't know, I, uh, <laughs> quite naive. <laughs> um, so this this is um, another possible um, possible model, which is uh, slightly more complicated. Uh, but the basic concept here is that um, <clears throat> you start a platform that. Uh, has as scope 
um, like a whole country, and uh, and you say yes, I am interested in uh, in collecting uh, leaks that have to do with these uh, specific uh, kinds of uh, um, categories um, in in the whole uh, country of Germany, say. At that point, uh, the whistleblower will choose a region that they wish to blow the whistle on. And depending on the region that they choose, the region that is pertinent to, uh, to their leak, uh, they will get forwarded to a different submission platform. Uh, the node administrator is the person that sets up this like, nationwide platform and all of the various regional ones. Um, at that point, the submissions that are done to all the various regional platforms um, are actually not forwarded to any receiver. They are just kept inside of the system, um, you know, buffered until somebody comes to uh, the person that runs this national wide uh, platform and says, hey, I am uh, an, a local activist organization from the region of uh, uh, Bavaria. I would be very interested in claiming all the, you know, 2,000 leaks that I see that have been submitted to platform region Bavaria. Uh, do you deem me appropriate as being uh, the node administrator for such a platform? At that point, this, this nationwide um, initiative uh, will, uh, will, you know, evaluate if, if they are, uh, you know, a, a legitimate organization and if they are trustworthy enough to be the owner of such leak site. Um, and if so, they will say, yeah, sure, be the node administrator of this leak site. Choose who, who, who will be the receivers of it, uh, you know, tweak it, change it, do, do whatever. Uh, and, um, and, you know, at that point, they, they will then um, become administrator of that interface. And perhaps they will configure uh, another receiver, like apart from themselves. Uh, they will set up uh, some other independent news organization from that region that will also receive all the leaks. And perhaps also they will, will, will look at the leaks and, and will, uh, will publish some information depending on what they have learned from there. Or, or perhaps use that information to be able to um, um, coordinate some campaigns uh, to be able to push for a uh, certain policy. Um, and, um, but I mean, the, the, the interesting thing is that it, it allows you to, um, to, to uh, start an initiative uh, that has um, as, uh, as scope a whole country without necessarily having beforehand the capacity to be able to um, accept leaks um, in all of these different um, local contexts. So it's, it's, um, it's a way to um, you know, build it distributed without necessarily having the capacity from the beginning. So you can start and campaign it for you know, the whole country uh, but, you know, not, not necessarily already have some people on the receiving end. And, and just the fact that, you know, it has actually been successful at receiving some leaks will perhaps prompt some people to, you know, get their shit together and, uh, and become uh, the node administrator for, for such, uh, such, such a site. Um, and yeah, so, you know, it, it, it will stay just unclaimed, displaying a counter saying, these are the leaks that this platform has received up until now. Uh, and, you know, do you want to claim it? Uh, click here and, uh, and you, you can, uh, you know, you can get in contact with us and, uh, and we, we will uh, evaluate if, uh, if, if you are, uh, you know, good, um, a good organization to run it. Um, another very interesting organizational structure is, uh, is something called investigative strike teams. Uh, and this is an idea that was originally thought, by, uh, thought up uh, by uh, Aaron Schwartz, and he, he wrote a very interesting blog post about this. Um, and, uh, and basically his concept is, um, you, you know, we, we want to, uh, what, what would be the perfect team to be able to, um, yeah, the graph is kind of complicated, <laughs> but it, I'll, I'll explain it in a second. Uh, what, what, is, what is the perfect team to be able to, um, you know, um, make sure that from information comes impact? Uh, and, and by actually, actually he uses um, to, to mean impact change. So how do you make sure that, um, how do you compose a team of people 
that will you know be sure to um, to maximize the change that can come from some information that you you are in possession and so uh, he he starts uh, with with the idea that uh, you know reporters are are really good at uh, at doing investigations uh, they 're really good at uh, you know going and knocking at people 's doors asking for questions uh, and and you know doing investigative work um, but they don 't necessarily have the time to to be able to you know write it in a humanizing and and you know way that actually reaches people and 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 um, and people that that are that that have uh, proven in, in you know in, in recent times to be very effective at this are bloggers so why not team create a team of a reporter and a blogger in this case here it's represented as a writer um, that that works as follows so you have the reporter that, that has this information. And, and based on this information, they need to, like, their goal is to understand what the truth is. Like, is this information factual? What, what, is, what is really behind it? Um, and so in, in, the, in the Global East case, how it would work is that the reporters are the receivers of a platform. And they receive these anonymous tips from whistleblowers. And, and based on these tips that they receive, they then go on and do you know, investigative work, journalism work, which means doing fact-checking, going and knocking at people's houses, calling people on the phone, uh, you know, all these kinds of things. Uh, and while they are doing this work, they may need uh, the assistance of a techie. So you need to add a techie in the team. And, and, and they will help them you know, analyze like, the kind of big data that they will have to deal with, um, you know, parse uh, uh, these documents that perhaps are in some weird uh, esoteric format. Um, and um, and they, they, at the end, produce this research, uh, this research that is the truth. Like this is, based on this information, this is what the capital T truth is. And, and, uh, and perhaps it will come out that you know, it was all completely false, so the truth does not come out, so they just discard it. But in the end, if, if, if this process is successful, the capital T truth will come out, and they will produce this output. And this output is not made public. It is something that they share with some people of their team, specifically the writer, which will take this truth and transform it into an article that will be something that then people uh, will understand and, and, and will you know, be aware of this issue. And this can be you know, like a blog post or um, a news article or, or, or whatever. But, but then, uh, um, you know, clearly, writing articles creates problems. So uh, because people may perhaps sue you. So at that point, he says, you need, a, you need to have a lawyer in your team that will uh, you know, defend you in case you end up in, in, uh, in, into a lawsuit. But then what, what else do you actually need to, to bring, bring forward like, proper change? Um, well, to bring forward proper change, you, you actually want to have political impact. So what you need in your team is also like a political organizer, somebody that is capable, uh, that has you know the right contacts, the right peop knows the right people uh, to call um, about that topic. You know, like the topic of environmental um, malpractice. Like you, you just learned uh, that the truth is that you know this oil company is uh, uh, dumping uh, tons of uh, of waste uh, in the ocean. The political organizer will know who are the right. Uh, you know, um, activists to call to organize, you know, some, some demonstrations and, uh, um, you know, campaigns to be able to, to stop that. Uh, and so they also need to be uh, uh, part of this team and they also need to be aware of uh, the capital T truth. Uh, and, and through that, uh, you will be able to reach also political impact. Uh, and then what he also adds uh, is, is lobbyists. Lobbyists uh, would then be the people that, based on still this capital T truth, use it uh, to be able to uh, influence uh, policy and, uh, and push representatives into uh, making uh, some decisions uh, uh, over others. Um, and yeah, I think, I think this, is, uh, this is a pretty, pretty solid, uh, solid team here, investigative strike teams. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, um, that said, I hope this has inspired you to start your own initiative. Uh, and, um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here. So if, if you have uh, some ideas of some things you, you, would, uh, you would like to, uh, to do, we can, uh, uh, we can, we can brainstorm them uh, together and, uh, and come up with, uh, 
with, uh, with something. Um, and uh, and with, with the Hermann Center, we also have this, uh, this thing that we call the Fast Track Program, which is uh, um, you know, a, a way to, uh, to bootstrap the process of, uh, of, of setting up, uh, you know, of going from uh, having an idea to, uh, to, uh, to, to actually doing it. Um, and I can, I can tell you more about that, um, that uh, later. Uh, if, uh, if you want to learn more, uh, here are some, uh, some links and resources. Um, and uh, yeah, do you have any questions? No questions? Ah, yes. I see. Um, well, I mean, we we have we the newspapers that um, we have worked with are the ones that I have uh, uh, put uh, there: Atlazzo, Yutsnivetsi, uh, Irpi. Uh, this the one that I mentioned about the Netherlands. It is not yet public, so I cannot. Uh, um, but it will go online on the 9th of September, and you will probably hear about it. So, it's um, yeah. But regarding the difference with open leaks, um, I mean, I guess the main technical difference is that we have some source code that is published. <laughs> um, I, it's very hard to assess uh, the technical difference of a system whose uh, source code or implementation is not uh, publicly available. So, yeah, I don't know. Hard to tell. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I thank you very much for, for your attention.